make a start on um, this focus uh, video on the leather. Um, so we're going to make a start on this side. Um, I'm just going to block in the dark bits first of all, um, which I will do with um, the polychromos black. So we're just missing um, a little tiny bit of footage due to me uh, having my hand in the way all of the time. So as soon as I realise that, I hopefully have changed it. Um, but um, all I've done is just blocked in some of the colour on this uh, part of the uh, bridle. This. So I'm using sort of um, round emotions because it's the it's the lip of the leather, so it's like a really nice, lovely, smooth curve. Um, and obviously, when we first start, it doesn't it's not really a curve, um, but when when we start to add more colour and tone and everything, it will um, it will become more curve like. Um, and then it gets darker in here as we go into this area here because it's in full shadow. And then that's a little bit lighter in there as well. And the more layers we put on, um, as always, the, um, the more detail we can get in. So let's just get this crease line in here. Oh, is that missing my hand? I can't really Let's do it this way and then at least you can see. Yeah, hopefully that will work. Let's bring in some cold grey. Um, so I've got the cold grey too, and I'm just going to um, just start to pop this in, and it'll go over the top of the um, the warm grey that I put in, and it'll start to blend it. And then we'll start to get that nice, um, smooth feeling. So I'm using relatively hard pressure, actually, on this uh, cold grey too, um, just to get the colour in and to get it to blend nicely. And we can get it over the top of that as well, and it'll smooth it. Then we can bring back the, um, the darker warm grey to the warm grey 6. Is it warm grey 6? Yeah. Um, And just darken that top edge bit up. Oh, you can't see everything. God. Bring the black in. Just darken up. Those areas that we put in before. And we can put in, I've got a cold grey three here. I'll just pop that in.
so just building up the the, um, the feeling of this leather really i mean this this it is a lot of it is in um uh, is a little bit out of focus or well, quite a bit out of focus but um you know we still should be able to get quite a nice feeling of leather in there and this is the warm gray back again Grey one just to lighten this area up a bit. This is the black again. It's all quite dark and dingy really in this in this area. Um, at the moment there's no real sort of interesting um bits but um you know it's 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 necessary to get these bits in um okay this is the cold gray two can't see a thing that i'm doing oh, might have to move the Move the camera a little bit and then that's a bit better I think. Yeah, you should be able to see what I'm doing then. I was hoping hoping to keep it over the entire piece in the exactly the same place, but I don't think that's gonna work. Um because my hand will end up obliterating it. just want us to blur out this here so just using very soft lines um, just to kind of um, smudge everything into each other so it's it's a little bit blurry. So you just you follow in the reference photo, um, you know, and you just want to get these lights and darks in where where they appear, um, but also getting that nice um, uh, feeling of smoothness as well.
a bit boring this bit because there's nothing awful lot happening. Right, and let's just smooth this up here a bit more. It's just a case of following your reference photo and just working that um, those those colours to get the um, the smoothness that you're after. And then getting the blending. I'm just going to bring this um, crease up a little bit. I'm just going to add just a touch into the um, into the bit ring, just to give it a bit of context. work on that later.
Okay, so we don't need to do much with that just yet. Um, and I'm just going to bring the black in and just darken this area again. problem is it's not a particularly interesting um, bit of leather this top bit so you know it's this is the dark indigo I'm just bringing in now just to um, bring in a little bit of um, this blueiness in the leather down here This is cold grey three. Uh, right, so we will um, make a start on the this leather bit here, which is um, Lots of uh, brown, so we've got Van Dyke brown, we've got um, walnut brown, um, a bit of nougat in there. Uh, so we'll start with the Van Dyke brown first um, and just start to uh, just start to work in this area here. I'm going to take it right up to the edge, but there is a lighter bit which um, I'll be able to bring in with the warm grey. And I want to get a nice smooth feeling, so I'm going to use um, sort of little round circly strokes. And just bring those in right down to this crease here, this back crease. Um, in So we need to think about doing those little um, stitches as well. So I'm just going to get this colour in.
So just a couple of light layers in there. You can see all that grain coming through. Um, and then I'm just going to take the, I'm going to use the black up here and just work in a little bit more of this crease area here. Just so we know that this is sort of rounded and, and it's kind of encroaching into this shiny bit here as well. increases a little bit here just give it a bit more light And then we're going to bring the walnut brown in and just start to, um, so don't worry about the graininess or anything like that to be, for now, it's not important. We're just going to block in these darker areas of the walnut brown. Again, using that sort of scumbling um, technique. Being aware of the curves that are in in the leather, you know, so sort of kind of following. There's no direction of grain or anything like that, but you're sort of kind of following the undulations that are um, that are in there. So I'm not using massive pressure; it's relatively light pressure, but the um, the pencil strokes are very close together. Need to be aware of these um, white, the white stitching here, and also this is in dark shadow. It'll be going darker still, but uh, Right, so um, I just want to put in these little 
um, bits of stitching. So I'm just going to go over here with the walnut brown again. Come into here and darken it in a bit, but just put a light layer just here where it's a little bit darker. And this is the black I'm just putting in this like a lip on the bottom bit here again light pressure um, just just kind of d dabbing in the um, the color Putting this, getting this darker. Right. So I'm going to um, just pick out those uh, uh, stitches. So you can see it's all looking very grainy at the moment and not very pretty at all, but that, that's going to change very soon. So I'm just going to put in these little bits of um, stitching. So I'm going to use, use the tape, bearing in mind that it, it will probably lift off a bit of the um, pigment around it as well. But as long as you've got that expectation and you know that that's what's going to happen, um, that is okay. So now we can just start to build this a little bit more. So we can just come in here with the black. start to pick out those a little bit more they are faded they're not in sharp focus um, you know as per the rest of the um, the, the this bit of leather 
you know, so we don't need to be, you know, amazing sharp focus uh, leather in here at all. And I'm just going to pop some warm grey too over the top of them, just to knock them back slightly. Right, and then Good, that's okay. So I can just smooth that out as well and start to darken this up a little bit. And I'm going to bring in some um, burnt sienna. Uh, just to kind of richen that this bit of brown leather up slightly and also to deepen this dark area so we can put it in over the top and it makes for a really good rich dark brown And then we can just start to bring it in over the top of the walnut brown and the Van Dyke brown. And it will start to smooth out a little bit. I want a nice transition from this dark shadowy into the, um, into the lighter leather. So, so there's a scumbly effect again. this on and then we'll come and use the warm grey and just start to um, build in some of those highlighty areas Just in these areas where we're going to just knock it back a little bit more. And then I'm going to use the nougat in here. For this, this bottom rolled edge. And then I'm going to... Um, create that rolled edge at the bottom you know so it looks rounded
вот. Right, so warm grey too. I'm now going to start bringing in over the top of what we've got here to bring in some of this nice um, feeling of a, a sort of shine um, in the leather. So it's just a case of bringing it in gradually and blending it into the the colours next to it. And and to blend, it's just a case of soft pressure and pulling one pigment into the other. And when I say soft pressure, I mean really really soft pressure. So when you draw on the back of your hand. Um, you don't um, you don't indent your skin. That's the type of pressure when I say really soft pressure. Um, and I think a lot of people don't don't always get how soft your pressure can be to get you know these really lovely um, soft effects. So I'm just coming in here with the warm grey again, just along this edge just to smooth and um, create some soft highlights in there. And I think I might end up bringing a touch of white um, just into those lightest areas okay so I'm going to run the warm grey to over very, very gently over the, that entire brown surface um, to smooth it all out. Um, and then I'm going to come back in here with this, with the black and just start to build in some of those darker areas of the leather and this Sort of like what well, it's a line of stitching and it's a crease. Just darken up that a little bit. Just darken up this And then um, all that brown and just start to create a little bit of detailing in this bottom bit here um, in the form of shading.
then I'll wrap around in here again. Uh, right, and then shading into here as well because we don't want to just have um, just this harsh black line. Uh, right, and then and then I'm thinking a warm grey again. There's the copper beach in here, um, just because I think it's it's going to have a good smoothing effect on this. It's just looking a bit. Um, that's a better, a better colour. Again, I'm just wanting to get um, some of that highlight in here. Right, so I've got the white um, and I'm just going to start just adding in a little bit more finer detail um, around and into this area here. this shine here so I was using the warm grey but it just wasn't wasn't giving me the um, the effect that I wanted so I've, I've gone to using white So it's not in your face and it's not bright white because you don't get the bright white over on the white um, board but it's um, a 
this is working a little bit better. And I'm just going to go in and just pull out these bits of um, stitching a little bit more. <sighs> That's looking a bit better. Okay. need to be careful I'm getting a smooth um, area of highlight in there so sitting back and just evaluating what you've got hang on a second I've got this yeah no that's okay I'm just going to come into this bottom bit here as well and just lighten up along here You're not you're not getting like a bright white. What, what you're getting is sort of like a a beigey colour, um, which is what I'm wanting. Which I was hoping I was going to get with the warm grey, but it just didn't um, didn't quite give me the the tone I was looking for. Right, and then I'm going to add a touch of. Um, Cap at Mortem into here as well. Um, just to give it a bit of a lift. And in here. I'm going to use the Burnt Sienna again very lightly over the, not over it, but sort of, um, you know, around that area that I put in. And then come and bring it into here. And you can see how nice and smooth it's now getting. Just add a bit more in there as well. And we'll uh, come in here and just darken up this. So that's not looking so bad. Let's take this white in there again. bit of a shine on that edge there.
and then let's just bring this white up into here as well and then Just smooth off and accentuate those to highlight a bit a little bit more. That was uh, walnut brown, and this is the warm grey too, just smoothing it out. And put the uh, walnut brown back in. And then some of the um, burnt sienna in there as well. And put the black over the top but what you what happens is you just make it a richer um, color if you don't uh, press too hard That's not looking too uh, bad. That's all fine. And then you start to get the feeling of the the, um, the grain of the leather as well because of how the colour's coming through. Um, so that's um, yeah, that's worked out quite nicely actually. So let's just work on this um, bit of the bit here. Now uh, a, it's quite yellow, so I'm going to be looking at. Do do do. do. I've got my raw umber, my raw sienna, and I've got my brown ochre. Um, these are the um, the Derwent Studio um, pencils. Um, so I'm going to use um, I'm going to use the raw sienna. Um, and just 
and very lightly just start to put that in here and you can see that it goes on really 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 lightly which can be a bit frustrating um you know if you're working on something where you want like a really bright yellow but on something like this where it's so subtle it's perfect so if you don't have these pencils then um you know use your yellow ochre um from your polychromos range you can use your light ochre from the pablos you can use yellow ochre from um luminance and light fast um, but use it very 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 lightly okay and then, oops then i'm going to use my um raw umber just to put this bit in here now this is a little bit greeny and um sort of slightly darker and i want there to be a a, a, a line but i want it to be sort of like a fuzzy line um if that makes sense so i'm just sort of fuzzing it into the color next to it and then i can darken up this bit here underneath where this leather sits like the probably the warm grey I think in here so get that all nicely smoothed off and then we'll just bring in this warm grey And then we'll bring in the white. Blending that out. And then I've got the warm grey six here um, that I'm just going to in there and then just darken this up a little bit again A bit tricky because it's out of focus, but um, just going to bring in. This is the um, brown ochre in here. 
just to get a bit more of that greeny colour in there. And then back with the um, warm grey six, and just get some feathery edges on that. Okay, so I need a relatively bright yellow. Uh, I'm going to use the dark Naples yellow and just sort of pull some of that into. area here. Oh god, I'm getting so fed up with my dogs, honestly, they're just up and down and up and down like flipping yo-yos. And with, with metal, it's just a case of keeping on going until it looks right. And it might look right really quickly, or it might take a while to look right. And there's no um, rhyme or reason, really.
is the one by two. tape and just run it down mm, that edge bit of scratchiness going on there I'm not sure why Um, this is the bronze, which I'm actually going to use in here now, because this is that greeny, uh, greeny browny colour that um, I think will work quite well and up here at the top as well. Good. Okay, so that's um, that's worked out quite nicely. Um, <clears throat> let's just do this bit here at the bottom of the bit. So that's a lot cooler. Um, the reason why this is yellow here is because it's a reflection of the um, of the mouthpiece mouthpiece, which is really bright golden. Um, <clears throat> but uh, let's just get a little bit of this in here. So this is brown ochre just going in here and then uh, this is a cold grey mm. yeah so this is a cold grey six um, and that we can have as like a bit of the shadow There's that cold grey too. So that would be a good one for smoothing. black and then let's just
And I've got this bronze again here. And just lighten that up a little bit because it's a bit a bit tricky to see what's um, what's in those shadows.
I'll get these shadow areas in. Get these shapes in first because they're going to really help you. And there are a lot of shadowy areas in this in this um, photograph. If you need to lighten your reference photo up, you know, if you're if you're using an iPad or something like that, and you need to lighten it up, then do. <clears throat> you know to be able to see into certain areas but don't forget to um, take it back down to what it was originally because otherwise you'll end up um, drawing everything too light This is a, again, it's well, it's the edge of the leather, but it's um, it's quite an, a soft edge. Actually, that wants to be a little bit less there, that's better. And this is all in darkness anyway, so it didn't really matter, but um, this edge is here. Let's get this a bit darker here. And then we can get some um we can get some colour in. Right, so let's get some of this brown in. <clears throat> we'll start with the walnut brown. Um, and we'll just... Now then, that's that bit here. Right there. <clears throat> just trying to figure out in my head which bits are um which bits are which so we just get the um 
the colour in and then we can start to build um, the detail from there and I'm going to use sort of sideways strokes because that's replicating the grain of the leather not that you can particularly see it in most of the places that it is quite dark but uh, So it's all very, um, not a huge amount of detail, just plotting in that colour. Um, and then I'm just going to do a little bit in here as well. black in that which I can put in but um, gives us a good idea where the, where the colour is and then we can start to come in and put more of those that tonal detail in <coughs> and then we've got the edge of this in first you can actually use the texture of your paper to help you um, on the uh, edges of things like this on the edges of leather where it's still a little bit rough um, you know all, all of the, the the top layer and everything are, are really nice and smooth <clears throat> but underneath the leather and on the edges it tends to be um, a much more rougher texture, so you could use your the texture of the paper just to show through a little bit to help with the texture that you're trying to create of the leather. Only obviously in the rougher places on on the top where it's smoother, then you want to you know you want to put more layers down, but um, you know use the paper where you can. So we're just going to get it get it down um, and then um, and then we'll come in and do detail right so I'm going to um, <clears throat> just mark in these um, stitches here not that I can see them particularly well but that's what I'm going to do. Um, this is much easier to do on dark paper because obviously you can see where you're putting your um, mark in. <coughs> and then. And then take the walnut brown Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
and then when we come down here again we're going to do it side to side because that is the um, that's the grain of the leather we want to capture that <coughs> so I'm starting to get that in there now and then this is really dark up here so all of that is in Yeah, so now it's just a case of, of going in smoothing, adding more colour and, um, you know, pulling out these um, these areas even more uh, for, the, um, for the stitches. I'll probably put too many in, actually. We use some burnt sienna um, just to start pulling in on top of that walnut brown, starting to build that richness. So I'll take this right to the edge, but I'm, I am going to darken that up some more. Bring some of this in here. So I'm, I'm just using soft pressure over the top um, in the direction of the grain of the leather. Um, this is just layer two, so you know it's still looking pretty rough and ready. Uh, 
Um, and then I think we can bring in a bit more of the walnut brown. This is starting to smooth already. And then it gets to a point where it's got it's got a curve in it and that's where it starts to pick up the light. Uh, it's a case of trying to depict these little um, sort of creases in, in the leather. So, um, warm grey, <coughs> two, may have to, may have to cut these out, that actually wasn't, I thought that would be quite a good way of um, doing it on the white, but it hasn't worked that well actually, works really well on the, um, on the dark paper but it doesn't seem to work quite so well on the white I'm just going to darken up this bit here. Yeah, they haven't worked very well at all, actually. I need to um, readdress those. It's funny how things work so well, and it, it works really well on the um, on the smooth paper as well. But it doesn't seem to want to work quite so well on this. Oh well. <clears throat> okay, so. Um just using the slice just to pull out those stitches um, where they haven't really worked with the white indenting them um, you can't you can't see particularly well obviously because my big enormous hand is in the way but I'm literally just sort of touching those stitches uh, with the um, the very end of the blade Yeah, so this is working better using the slice just to pull out these um, little stitches. So I'm using the slice quite quite hard. Um, so I think 
and you can see that yeah uh, using the slice quite hard and pulling out the um, pulling out the pigment <gasps> Uh, right okay good so that's that's them in so now it's just a case of uh, just building up the layers really so this is quite a quite a dark bit of leather um, and then let's just darken this bit next to it This, this is quite really very dark under here because it's all shadow area. <clears throat> and because we've kind of gone in with texture on this leather bit here, you know, gone in side to side, it's kept that texture, which is really quite nice. We just need to smooth it now and... Um, but keep those that that the, the texture um, and we do that by um, introducing the lighter color like the warm gray so we've got the um, burnt sienna again We've got the black. We can increase the um, the values down here because this is quite dark because it's in shadow.
bring the edge in. And the thing with leather is it's about getting the um, it's about the texture, but it's also about getting the shading and everything right, you know, so that it looks um, 3D and it doesn't look too perfect. Okay. So. Knock those back a little bit. And start to bring in some of these highlighty areas in here, some of these creases. Right, so taking the white and just um, starting to build this textured area in here. And then we can bring a bit more of the, um, actually I'm going to use the walnut brown. And I'm just going very, very, very gently, kind of around and a little bit over the, uh, the lighter marks that I put in there to try and get that texture in there. I want to keep that lovely texture, but um, I want to want I want to ensure that you you know there's some some of this dark in there as well.
it's looking all right and if you want to get that sort of like um it's if it's a bit like a bobbly texture um you know then then that's what you need to be doing with your pencil to be able to get that texture you need to replicate it with how you put the um uh how you put the um the pigment down on the paper I'm just going to try and tidy up around here. It's all looking a little bit messy. Just come back in here again and just fill in a few more. <clears throat> it's not looking so bad. Um, do you want to take some? Um, shape I didn't didn't put this in not that I'm going to be doing a huge amount with this but um, I just want to put some of this warm grey in that's not the esters um, in here So we can work on that a little bit. Right. Let's bring more of this white in. Just gives it that nice creased look that leather's got. Um, you know, because you want to get as much, you want to get as much detail in there as possible. Good. <clears throat> Stop those back a little bit. And then let's just bring in some oops highlights into here.
just to darken this envelope. So this is the, the keeper that we're drawing at the moment and they they do have a um, sort of like a, a shape to them, you know, with the leather. Um, there's like a little ridge top and bottom usually. I'm just literally just I'm just colouring really I'm just shading um, that's all it is layering over the top of and um, and just shading it in where it needs to be uh, shaded I think if you make sure that you start off with the correct shape then you're kind of halfway there really And try and go lightly at first you know just just put a semblance in first <clears throat> and then you can um, you know build on that um, I think this technique is more uh, um, it's more of like a pastel technique really you know putting all of your values down and then going in over the top putting your lights in I can't get light light but I can get this nice just sheen which works very very nicely with leather um, so um, yeah that's worked quite well actually So there's a, uh, yeah, so there's a, a dark area, a dark um, gap, um, and then And with, with leather like this where you really can't 
see very much at all. It is just a case of, you know, putting down what you can see. And it's just going to be darks and, and lights, really. I'm just going to use the walnut brown and just start to darken off this area here. I'm okay with keeping this texture in because it's the underside of the leather, so it is it's rougher. Still really um, gentle pressure and just gently get that pigment in. This corner here is some um, lighter, so I'm using the uh, warm grey two here. Right, okay, I'm just going to darken it up a little bit. Right, so... up these areas here so this is again is the edge of the um, of the leather obviously it's kind of super sized but um, you know you'd be able to get the uh, The, the the detail in where you need to then we're going to go back in again with the um, walnut brown and just start to darken up this area in here still wanting to keep that texture so using like a very light sort of scumbling um, technique with the with the pencil sort of roundy circles going to bring in the black as well I'm not making it black all I'm doing is I'm just darkening what's already there darkening this area here that's in this in this shadow so actually drawing things that are really soft and slightly fuzzy and out of focus is much 
more challenging than drawing something really clear. Um, and I think that's because, you know, our brains try and take over what, what we're doing. Um, you know, it tries to kind of make sense and add clarity to what it is that we're drawing. So it's almost like you're, you're trying to draw the, the, the fuzz and the hazy um, elements and your brain's trying to um, sharpen it up. So you've you've kind of got this constant battle in your head where you're where you're trying to draw fuzziness, but your brain's trying to make you draw something that's um, that's much clearer, and um, and that can be tough. Right, so we're just going to go in with the black and the um, walnut brown again, just on the top bit here. I just have to sink my chair just a slight little bit, just a little bit too high. It's really important as well, actually, if you are drawing for, for a considerable amount of time, to make sure that you've got the right equipment and that you have the um, the right height for your chair and, you know, all that type of stuff, because it, it can make, a, well, it does make a massive difference. Um, you know, you can end up with sort of bad neck ache and back pain and stuff like that. So, um, you know, just making sure that everything is is um, at the right height is is important. I've got a chair that goes up and down, which is um, uh, now then what we're looking for. Don't see my all my pencils fell on the floor. Um, so <laughs> they're all in a different order than what I had them before. Um, but yeah, my chair goes um, goes up and down, um, so so I um, you know I can get the best height for you know whatever it is that I'm drawing. Um, and because this is a relatively sort of narrow piece and it's quite low down on my um, drawing board, then having my chair just slightly lower down is um, is helping. Okay, that's looking um, that's looking quite nice. Um, I don't want to bring in. I'm just going to bring in a little bit more of this burnt sienna in here, or even though it's a little bit greyer on the actual photo. Um, and then we're going to go warm grey um, one just for this middle bit here. Fuzz off this a little bit. And just bring this back down here just a touch. Just darkening off this keep a bit here. Okay. Yeah, so that looks kind of kind of nice actually. And I'm and I'm like this um, 
this bit of texture in here as well because that is what the inside of a bridle looks like it, it is that rougher unfinished um texture so uh yes i'm pleased pleased with that just bringing a little touch more of the 